Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I picked up this Red Dragon keyboard the other day for an Amazon live stream that I was doing. And this is kind of a budget-minded mechanical keyboard. And I thought I would do a quick review of this thing to see what it's all about. And we're gonna get to that review in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the keyboard with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this keyboard is all about. Now this is their K552 keyboard. There are two colors available. This obviously is the white one. There's also one that comes in black that costs a little bit less. This is using OutEMU red switches, and you get a very nice mechanical feel and actuation to these without the high price tag. So you're not gonna get the precision you might find with a cherry red switch, but I found this to be a really nice keyboard to type on, let alone game on. So if you like that feel of mechanical keyboards and you don't wanna spend all that much, this I think is a nice compromise, but just know there are some compromises when you don't buy the top end keyboards. But I was very surprised by how nice this actually felt as I was typing on it. Uh, the key travel here is about two millimeters and overall just a good typing keyboard. Now the keyboard of course is a wired keyboard. It will connect over USB. It doesn't require any drivers. Anything that works with a USB keyboard is going to work with this. I tried it on my iPad, my Windows machines, my Macs, my Android devices. Everything picked it up right away without a driver or complaint. You also have the ability here to disable the Windows key for gaming. If that's something you accidentally hit while you're in a game, you just hit function in the Windows key and that will lock it out and hit function Windows again to re-enable it. And like many mechanical keyboards, it's very easy to pull these keys off and get at the switch underneath. So it's got a lot of the features you might find on something more expensive. Now this is backlit and it's got an RGB backlight as you can see here. It has a couple of levels of brightness. It obviously is getting drowned out by my studio lights when we uh, go to the other shot here, but in the dark, it looks great. Now each row is its own color. You can't change the color, but you do have some control over individual keys. And the nice part about this is that you don't need to load up any software to program it. So let me show you how that works. Now there are a number of presets built into the keyboard already that you can cycle through. So right now we've got it on the static setting, which is the default, every key is lit. If I go through this here, you can see there's a few modes that we can shift between. So this one is kind of like a first person shooter mode. Uh, here you've got some animation going. You can control the speed of this with another key press. Here's another animation. Here's yet another one. And they have a couple different scenarios that you can put in place depending on your preferences. I'm more of a static person myself. Now you also have some game presets here that are configured for different types of games depending on what keys are used the most in those. So for example, this is a first person shooter mode. And then what I'm gonna do here is go down to the end of the line uh, to function zero. And you're gonna see the keyboard go dark here. But what I can do is put it into programming mode by hitting function and home. And what I can do now is start uh, tapping on individual keys to light them up. So you do have a per key level here of control. You just can't control the color of those keys. But I was happy to see that you have some customization here and per key customization at that. Now, one thing I noticed when I first got the keyboard was that it was sliding around on my desk quite a bit. To avoid that sliding around, you wanna make sure that these uh, little feet here are extended. Uh, when they are not extended, there's no rubber foot on the back of the keyboard to grip your desk and it will move around a lot. You do have some rubber here on the front, but not the back. So when you extend these out, uh, there is some rubber here that will connect with your desk and you've got a good grip. And again, I just really like the feel of this keyboard. I like the red key switches. They're not clicky, but you do get that feel of a mechanical key. And that was what I liked about this one. They have a bunch of other keyboards in their line that are also relatively affordable running with similar switches. They have some that do click a little bit more if you want that. They've got some with the number pad on them. But I think for a low cost compact mechanical gaming keyboard, this might be worth looking at if you're on a budget. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, 
and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.